Drive carefully. Really? Well, I'll be damned. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever the case may be. However, I hope it's been good. My day so far, hmm, hmm, hasn't been too bad. Hasn't been too bad. And it is an absolutely beautiful day here on the GC and it's a shame that I miss so much of it because I'm in my room all the time. I am in the car though, you've guessed right, and I am on my way to somewhere. Little do you know. <laughs> but um, yes, I am in the car. So my morning, let me tell you about my morning. My morning, people has been, mm, well, what can I say? It's below average now, let me put it that way. And it's below average because my right leg, it doesn't have as much power as it used to be. Let me put it that way. Um, what I mean by that is I can probably, while standing up, lift my knee up to about just below my hip area without sending aches and pains through my groin on both sides on the outside on the inside and in my lower back I'm unable to do my rubber sort of elastic exercises anymore really on that side because it hurts it hurts too much and it hurts enough that it can send me into fits of tears and whys and oh, everything else under the sun so I still do it but I don't push and I certainly cannot stretch it as I said above the region of my hips so I used to be able to get it way up sort of well I used to be able to stretch or bend my knee probably up just under my breast area like that movement and breast area um, yes, that's right, people at my age, your breasts do end up down that way. So, um, but, I haven't got my flicker on, so why are you thinking I'm coming over? I don't know. Um, yeah, so, that's that. Sorry, I was just concentrating, and when I'm in the car, as you know, I experience a little bit of brain frog, which means... I have to concentrate extra harder so and I do very rarely drive these days I only drive when I have to when my daughter's not around and when she can't take me to my appointments I generally don't make my appointments now outside of her inside of her work hours sorry so yes um, so, and this is not sponsored, I'm just having a sip out of my cup, which is saying 50 years of Big Mac. Mm, that's a long time of fast foods, people. Try and get over up here. But yeah, getting back to my morning. I mean, my morning is never hectic never hectic at all I take it very slow pace um, you know I I've tried my Tai Chi now sitting down but because I don't have quite enough in a core strength I find that I can't really um, I just can't do all of the Tai Chi that I would normally do standing up so but like my leg exercises my rubber sort of elastic exercises I do do what I can do otherwise I believe I may just dwindle away so and I don't want that to happen while I'm not well um, because well you know I don't really want to get like really worse or really bad No real, I don't know. I just it's almost like I'm putting a, a time frame of 
of this illness on my my back but it's something that I can't prevent I'm sorry so I shouldn't even be acting that way it's something that I definitely can't prevent so yeah but look I do try and maintain what I can do with my current strengths and I am noting down now what type of symptoms I'm experiencing and what type of movements or exercises I'm doing to create those, um, you know, to create those symptoms. So, and in the past, I've not really felt like the neurosurgeons have been listening. I mean, the last time I went there, the neurosurgeon said to me, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do this? And I walked out of that office and my list hadn't even been spoken about. So I tried to take a mental note of what they asked me. I wrote that down after my visit and throughout the year I have taken note of what they want to know back, if that makes sense. Probably not. But I've taken a note. So he's hoping that this time won't be anything new they ask me and I will be getting a word in this time. I've probably seen these neurosurgeons three times already. I have to be honest, not that I want surgery, but I do feel that if I had seen a neurosurgeon privately, I would have had different results by now anyway which is quite frustrating because it's you know I've been like this since August 2015 so in August of 2018 it'll be three years three years of pain I'm on opioids I'm on other medication that is also good for other symptoms and problems like for example, um, in debt, I'm on that for pain, or I'm on that for depression, and it also helps with pain. It works well with the actual pain medication that I'm on. Before, I was on Zoloft. Zoloft was a horrible mix. Didn't work well at all with my pain meds. It had me thinking unsafe thoughts and people in the mental health sort of um, profession will understand what that means. And if you don't, I'm as well just tell you, I was suicidal. And I had actually attempted suicide twice, both with insulin. So it's a sad day. But both times I woke up to myself when I was having a hypo and luckily I had enough enough honey in that in the house and carbs to sort of get my sugar back up. I don't know whether I would have rang for emergency service. I don't know. I do know though, I can't live without my, my children in my life. My youngest adult and my 11 year old. There's no way I could ever live without them. And that's what keeps me, along with the correct medication, from having any more unsafe thoughts. So what else can we talk about? You already know about my depression, anxiety. I sort of have my, well, I don't really have my anxiety under control. However, I don't have a lot of or enough events to have to worry about treating it with chemicals you know I do get anxious when I'm in the car with someone else no matter who it is because I certainly have tried person to person to see if it's any particular person that makes me nervous but I'm really glad to say it doesn't it doesn't make a difference who I'm with I get nervous I don't know why I can't think of why um, whether it's because of my driving capabilities 
while I'm on the opioids or which I don't think it is because I'm not a I'm not really a bad driver now like I don't stay just two or three cars behind someone um, on a highway I'll stay 500 meters away maybe five car lengths away so but I'm not talking like um, like one car distance away two car distances away like there's a bit of a gap in between type of thing so I do I'm ultra careful and I make sure that I'm way within the speed limits I don't go over in any way for example your speedometer it might say that you're doing 110 but in real life you're doing about 107 don't know why they do it but they do set your speedometer um, <clears throat> pardon me um, so it's three kilometers behind I don't know I've never really googled it to find out why but you know it could be an interesting um, find it could be an interesting fact that I probably need to look up but yeah so like the speed limit could be 110 I sometimes stay on 100 and I'll stick in the actual slow lane and if I need to overtake I will overtake but I tell you now there's not really a lot of times that I have overtaken in a slow lane I've just stayed behind even the caravans or the slow trucks so yeah so I'm not talking about medication ah yeah Lyrica and I found that everyone that actually is on Lyrica my big sis is on Lyrica she experiences the same problem I've been to the pain clinic and when I'm in groups of people I've asked them what type of side effects they have from Lyrica and they say the same thing brain fog it's a horrible thing to feel for example you could be looking at a bottle on a bench but you can't think of what that item is a bottle on a bench you could be passing a car well, I've never really felt it in this circumstance but you know like you know you could be looking at a ring on your finger but you can't really say what it is um, you know things like that or you could be going to say something you cough and lo and behold you've forgotten what you were going to talk about so and there's some traffic on the road today I'll tell you that so medication not all of it oh, I mean look it does obviously work with my pain I did come off at 70 I started to come off at 75 milligrams and I was starting to feel the effects somewhat of that reduction however I started to feel more pain this particular medication is um, how it works is it stops the receptors your nerve receptors from getting messages to your brain so it's an it's, it, it's a it's based on neurological sort of medicine um, so my pain sort of increased but as it turns out it would have increased anyway because my condition is getting worse no I haven't had my MRI yet to detect that but I haven't had the feeling like this in my right leg ever before I have lost one sensation which is that real stabbing pain like an electronic stabbing pain I used to have that down my left leg I haven't had that in a while um, so yeah it's my right leg and I found that I've lost a lot of um, strength in that leg so if I'm walking how I first noticed it was that I could I, I occasionally felt my toes scraping on the ground and it wasn't the toe it wasn't the scrape it was the actual how can I put it like you you put you can feel someone pushing on you but you can't feel the actual like push of the nail or God, it's fine it's hard to explain but but yeah so um, I just I sort of first sort of that's when I first discovered the actual um, symptom and that problem so mm. 
Now I haven't seen the neurosurgeon in 12 months and I don't know whether I've, this is brain fog. I don't actually know whether I've told you yet on this vlog what my condition is. So it's from within my thoracic to my lumbar area and sacral, I've got bulging discs. And throughout that same area of the spine, I've got impingements of the nerve. So obviously something's happening um, because my right leg has lost strength. So, and I do remember telling you in this vlog that I do try and maintain the exercises that my physiotherapist has given to me. Um, with that big rubber sort of elastic thing and also Tai Chi that I learnt in um, that I learnt in the pain clinic pain um, class classes yeah so but my morning so far I did get up I've had a shower you know even that is getting laborious now even to get a shower it's um it's hard my lower back to mid back it hurts i mean i wash my hair in the shower and shampoo it and i generally let that stuff run down my body and as it's running down i'll wash over my my parts but uh, i just can't do it anymore i can't oh when i say i can't do it anymore it's just physically hard to actually shower myself it's very difficult and um, yeah difficult I think is the prominent word here but and I think soon sooner or later I will I will lose the ability to actually drive the car I won't be able to drive the car and I know I already said it but I don't actually think that my condition or my pain would have been allowed to continue as far as it has if I would have seen a private neurosurgeon, neurologist, or whoever the person is that you go and see about the results of an MRI, or you know, it's. And I know there are a lot of people who are worse off than me. I'm talking, they've got brain tumors, and I know of someone that's got, um, that has got aneurysms, and they're just ready to pop, but they're not the dangerous type of aneurysm. But anyway, um, you know, I know of people that have cancer. I know of people that have, as I said, they're worse off than myself. It's just hard to think that when you're lying there or sitting there and you've got this pain to the extent where it takes your breath away. I, I, I've said to a few people so far that if, if I chose what type of condition I had that would mean I suffer a lot of pain either more or less than what I've got what would you wish I went well I wouldn't wish it but because I'm 45 40, 45 at the moment so no way I wish upon myself to get to have another baby way too old I've got far too many um, problems with me that can cause other problems from having another baby but let me put it this way I would choose to go through labor for even 36, 40 hours, maybe even five days worth of labor. With my first child, it was 36. And no matter, my second child, sorry, it was shorter, but, sorry, I thought I had to sneeze then. Um, but any, I mean, I would rather choose labor because I know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And through this, I can't see that light. It's not there in front of me. You know, I don't think I'm going to get better anytime soon, to be honest with you. And that's frustrating. And that hurts. Um, I won't talk about that anymore because I'm actually fighting back the tears at the moment. Thank God you can't tell. But I'll have another drink to wash those tears down. I just don't know. I don't know whether it's going to be a problem that's fixed anytime soon. 
I can walk down and above my, my down the stairs and back up the stairs at home, but get this. Sometimes I'll have no choice. I have to take Bambi to the toilet. She's a living being. She needs to excrete. I take her down to the toilet. We sit outside for probably an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. And I do that because to have to walk up them stairs again so that I don't have to put up with pain. I have to walk up fairly quick so the pain doesn't hit me suddenly. I get onto my bed, I lay down, and the pain is enough that reduce, it reduces me to tears. That saddens me. I have a shower every every day. I try, although it was, it's been three days. Um, I've not had a shower for. This morning I had that shower. And that's never been the case before. I've never not wanted to shower before. I've, I've always wanted to shower every day, except for since I've since this back has got worse. I've left it three days. Don't sleep with anyone, so that's okay. My husband and I sleep in different rooms. My son sleeps in his room, so there you go. So I don't have to worry about smelling anyone out. Which is good. But... Unfortunately, I'm going through this and I hate the fact that I have to go through it. But yeah, there is someone off worse than, worse than me in this world. I know that. Even worse on the Gold Coast. There's someone here worse off than me on the Gold Coast. On the GC. I don't know, people. Comment below what you want to hear me talk about next. I mean, I'm sure you don't want to hear about my depression, anxiety, bulging discs, impingements of the nerves and all that over and over again. There must be something else you want to hear, hear about. You know, maybe my next video will be about my life. I don't know. Maybe I should write a book. I don't know. Guys, girls, anyone that watches my YouTube channel or my vlogs, please help me out. Subscribe to my channel like or dislike most of all hit that notification bell so that whenever I upload you will get that upload into your notifications box and then you can decide whether you watch me or not all right cheerio and we will see you again soon until then mwah, mwah, mwah.